murder in the first degree, premeditated homicide, is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You have heard a long and complex case, ladies and gentlemen, and now is your duty to try and sit down and separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead, the life of another is at stake. If you have a reasonable doubt in your mind as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then you must be found guilty. Whichever way you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. You are faced with grave responsibility. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The jury will retire. Father. 
Got a knife in the chest. What <laughs> <laughs> kind of people we are. <laughs> you know, them. What's the matter? You got a cold? A Lulu. It's hot with a cold skin. Dude, I had one last year. While I was on vacation, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take seats. All right. This better be quick. I've got to get to Hamilton for tonight. I must be the only person in the world who hasn't seen it yet. All right, Your Honor. Start the show. How about sitting down? The lady at the window. How about sitting down? Oh, I'm sorry. Tough to figure, isn't it? A kid kills his father. Big! Just like that. <laughs> well, it's the element. They let them kids run wild. Maybe it serves them right. There are better proofs than some emotion you may have. Perhaps a dislike for some group. We all agreed it was hot. And that our tempers will get short. That's if we disagree. But this is open and shut. Let's get it done. All right. Now, you people can handle this any way you want to. I mean, I'm not going to make any rules. If we want to discuss it first and then vote, that's one way. Or we can vote right now and see how we stand. Let's vote now. Who knows? Maybe we can all go home. Yeah. Let's see who's where. Right. Let's vote now. All right. Let us vote. Does anyone who doesn't want to vote? That would be good. All right. All those voting guilty, raise your hand. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven for guilty. Okay? Not guilty? Hey, you're in left field! Okay! Eleven to one. Eleven guilty, one not guilty. Now we know where he stands. Do you really believe he's not guilty? I don't know. After six days, she doesn't know. In six days, I can learn calculus. This is ABC. I don't believe that it's as simple as ABC. I never saw a guiltier man in my life. What does a guilty man look like? He is not guilty until we say he is guilty. Are we to vote on his face? You sat right in court and heard the same things I did. The man's a dangerous killer. You could see it. Where do you look to see if a man is a killer? Ah, well, I want to know. Tell me what the facial characteristics of a killer are. Maybe you know something I don't know. Look, what is there about the case that makes you think the boy is innocent? He's 19 years old. That's old enough! He knifed his own father four inches into the chest. An innocent little 19-year-old kid. I agree with you that the boy is guilty, but I think we should try to avoid emotionally colored arguments. All right. They proved it a dozen different ways. Do you want me to list them? No. Well, do you believe that stupid story you told? Now, now. Do you believe the kid's story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. So what you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not so easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy on to die without talking about it first. Is there something wrong because I voted fast? Not necessarily. Look, I think the kid's guilty. You couldn't change my mind if you talked for a hundred years. I don't want to change your mind. Just what are you thinking of? I want to talk for a while. Look, this kid's been kicked around all his life. You know, living in a slum, his mother dead since he was nine. That's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. You know why slum kids get that way? Because we knock him over the head once a day, every day. I think maybe we owe him a few words. That's all. All right. It's hard. Sure. It was hard for me. Everything I got, I fought for. I worked my way through college. That was a long time ago, and perhaps you do forget. I fought, yes. But I never killed. I know what it's like. I never killed nobody. I've been kicked around, too. You wait until you work with Addy. He's a big boy that buys the advertising walks in. We all know. In my country, in Europe, kicking was a science. Let's try to find something better than that. I don't mind telling you this lady. But we don't owe this kid a thing. He got his fair trial, didn't he? You know how much that trial cost? He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown-ups here. 
You're not going to tell us that we're supposed to believe him in the way what he is. I put the mug on all my life. You can't believe a word they say. You know that. I don't know that. What a terrible thing for a man to believe. Since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? You have no monopoly on the truth. All right. It's not Sunday. We don't need a servant. <laughs> what this man says is very dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like civilized people. Right. Oh, all right, you insist. Thank you. Sure. If we're going to discuss the case, why, let's discuss the facts. That's a good point. We have a job to do, let's do it. If you all don't mind, I'm going to close the window. <laughs> it was blowing on my neck. If you don't mind, I'd like to keep the window open. But it was blowing on me. Don't you want a little air? It's summer. It's hot. I was very uncomfortable. There are 12 of us in this room. It's the only window, if you don't mind. I have some rights, too. So do the rest of us. Couldn't you trade chairs with someone at the other end of the table? All right. I will open the window. If someone would trade. Take my chair. <coughs> Yeah, let's. I may have an idea here. I'm just thinking out loud now. <coughs> but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince this lady that we are right and she's wrong. <laughs> Maybe if we each talk for a minute or two, you know, try it on for size. That sounds fair enough. Very fair. Supposing we go once around the table. Right, let's do it. Right. Let's start with you. <laughs> well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. In what way was it obvious? I just mean that nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. Innocent until proven guilty. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't even have to open his mouth. That's in the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment. You've heard of it. Everyone has. Oh, well, sure, I've heard of it. I know what it is. I... what I meant. Well, anyway... I think he's guilty. <laughs> no reasons. Just guilty. There is a life at stake. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one, let's take the old man who lived on the second floor right underneath the room where the murder took place. At 10 minutes after 12, on the night of the killing, he heard loud noises from the upstairs apartment. He said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the kid say to his father, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he hears the body falling, and he ran to the door of his apartment, looked out, and saw the kid running down the stairs and out of the house. Then he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed the time of death around midnight. Right! Now what else do you want? It doesn't seem to fit. The boy's entire story is flimsy. He claims he was at the movies. That's a little <coughs> ridiculous, isn't it? He couldn't even remember what picture he saw. That's right! Did you hear that? You're absolutely right. He didn't have any ticket stub. Who keeps a ticket stub at the movies? That's true enough. I suppose. But the cashier didn't even remember him. And the ticket taker didn't either. Look, what about the woman across the street? If her testimony don't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She saw the killing, didn't she? Let's go in order. Just a minute. Here we have a woman who's lying in bed and can't sleep. It's hot, <coughs> you know. <clears throat> anyway, she looks, she, she wakes up 
and looks out the window. And right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. How could she really be sure it was the kid when she saw it through the windows of a passing elevated train? <coughs> She's known the kid all his life. Her window was right opposite of his, across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it. I heard her swear to him. Okay. And in court, they proved that you can look through the windows of a passing L train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. Weren't you telling us just a minute or two ago how you can't trust them? How you can't believe them? So? Then I'd like to ask you something. Why do you believe her? She's one of them too, isn't she? You're one smart fellow, aren't you? Take it easy! Come on, sit down. What are you letting her get you all upset for? Relax. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, they did take us out to the women's room, and we looked through the windows of a passing elevator train. Didn't we? Yes, we did. And weren't you able to see what happened on the other side? I didn't see as well as they told me I would see. But I did see what happened on the other side. You see? Do you see? Just calm down now. It's your turn. I'll pass it. That's your privilege. How about you? I don't know. I started to be convinced, you know, with the testimony from those people across the hall. Didn't they say something about an argument between the boy and his father around 7 o'clock that night? I mean, I can be wrong. I think it was 8 o'clock, not 7. That's right, 8 o'clock. They heard the father hit the boy twice and then saw the boy walk angrily out of the house. Right. What does that prove? Well, it doesn't exactly prove anything. It's just a part of the picture. I didn't say it proved anything. Anything else? No. I don't know. Most of it's been said already. <laughs> we can talk all day about this thing, but I think we're wasting our time. I don't. Neither do I. Come on. Look at the kid's record. He stole a car. He's been arrested for mugging. I think he said he stabbed somebody in the arm. He did. <laughs> He's been picked up for knife fighting. At 15, he was in reform school. And they sent him to reform school for stabbing someone! This is a very fine boy. Ever since he was five years old, his father beat him up regularly. He used his fist. So would I, on a kid like that. You're right. It's the kids nowadays. The way they are, they don't listen. I got a kid. When he was eight years old, I caught him with some of the neighborhood gang fighting, and down the street. After all I told him about staying away from those toughs, and he goes and joins them. I gave him a woman he wouldn't forget. And you know what? When he was 15, he hit me, his own mother, in the face. He's big, you know. I haven't seen him in three years. Maybe I'm better off. I hate tough kids. You work your heart out! All right, let's get on with it. We're missing the point here. This boy, let's say he's the product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. We can't help that. <coughs> We're not here to go into the reasons of why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are. I know it. So do you. The children who come out of slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. You said it there. I don't want any part of them. Believe me. I've lived in this slum all my life! Now wait a second. I used to play in a backyard that was filled with garbage! Maybe it still smells on me! Now let's be reasonable. There's nothing personal! There is something personal! Didn't mean you. Who did he mean? I can understand. 
understand the sensitivity. Let's stop this bickering. We're wasting time. It's your turn. All right. I had a peculiar feeling about this trial. Somehow, I felt that the defense counsel never really conducted a thorough cross-examination. Too many questions were left unasked. Well, it doesn't change my opinion about the guilt of the boy. Still, I agree with you that the defense <coughs> counsel was bad. So? This is the point. What about the facts? So many questions were never answered. What about the questions that were answered? For instance, let's take that cute little switch knife. You know, the one that fine upright can admit it buying. All right. Let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again, Madam Foreman. We all remember what it looks like. I don't see why we have to look at it again. What do you think? The lady has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Okay with me. <coughs> this knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence. Wouldn't you agree? I do. Now let's get the sequence of events right as they relate to the switch knife. The boy admits going out of the house at 8 o'clock after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or punched. He said he went to a neighborhood store and bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the following day when he admitted selling it to the board. I think everybody agrees it's an unusual knife. Pretty hard to forget something like that. The storekeeper identified the knife and said it was the only one of its kind he had in stock. Why did the boy get it? As a present for a friend of his, he said. Am I right so far? Right. You bet she's right. Now I want you to listen to this. She knows what she's talking about. <coughs> Next, the boy claims that on his way home, the knife fell through a hole in his coat pocket, that he never saw it again. Now there's the story, people. You know what really happened. The boy took the knife home, and a few hours later stabbed his father with it and even remembered to wipe away the fingerprints. Everyone connected to the case identified this night. Now, are you trying to tell me that someone picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No. I'm saying it's possible that the boy lost the knife and that someone else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's possible. Take a look at that knife. It's a very strange knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to him. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept it. I'm just saying it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible! What are you trying to do? Yeah, what is this? Who do you think you are? It's not possible. No! Let's be quiet! Where did you get it? I got it in a little junk shop around the corner from the boy's house. It costs two dollars. Now listen to me. I'm listening. You pulled a real smart trick here. <coughs> but you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. The boy lied and you know it. And maybe he did lie. Maybe he did lose the knife and maybe he did go to the movies. Maybe the reason the cashier didn't see him was because he sneaked into the movies. And maybe he was ashamed to say so. Is there anyone here who didn't sneak into the movies once or twice when they were young? I didn't. <laughs> <coughs> Not even once. We didn't have movies. <laughs> maybe he went to the movies, maybe he didn't. And he may have lied. Do you think he lied? No, that's a stupid question. Sure, he lied. Do you? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. Do you think he lied? I... I don't know. Now, wait a minute. What are you? The guy's lawyer? Look, there are still 11 of us who think he's guilty. You're alone. What do you think you're going to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, he'll be tried again and found guilty sure as he's bored. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We could be here all night. It's only one night. A man may die. Fine. 
Well, yes, that's true. Think we ought to get on with it now? Right. Let's get going here. How do you like this guy? Well, what do you say? You're the one holding up the show. Obviously, you don't think the boy is guilty. I have a doubt in my mind. But you haven't really presented anything that makes it possible for us to understand <coughs> your doubt. There's the old man downstairs. He heard it. He heard the kids shriek it out. The woman across the L track, she saw it! We know he bought a switch knife that night, and we don't know where he really was. At the movies? Earlier that night, the kid and his father did have a fight. He's been a violent kid all the way, and while that doesn't prove anything... Still, you know there's... I've got a proposition to make. I want to call for a vote. I want you 11 people to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. If there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't stand alone. We'll take in a guilty verdict right now. Okay, well, let's do it. That sounds fair. Does anyone agree? I certainly am. Let's roll it. Perhaps this is best. <laughs> Sorry. 
Okay, now. Maybe look. you'd like to know why? Let me tell you why that kid's a The lady wants to talk. Thank you. This woman chose not to stand alone against us. That's her right. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone, even if you believe in something very strongly. She left the verdict up to us. She gambled for support and I gave it to her. I want to hear more. The vote is 10 to 2. That's fine. If the speech is over, let's move on. If there was anything in the kid's favor, I vote not guilty. I don't see what it is. Neither do I. <coughs> Clutching at straws. As guilty as they get, that's the kid, I suppose. It's that one juror that's holding out, but she'll come around. She's got to, and fundamentally, she's a very reasonable woman. I guess so. They haven't come up with one real fact yet to back up a not guilty verdict. It's hard, you know. Yes, it is. And what does guilty beyond a reasonable doubt really mean? Oh, what's a reasonable doubt? Exactly. When a life is at stake, what is a reasonable doubt? You've got to have law and order. You've got to draw the line somewhere. If you don't, everyone will start knifing people. Not much doubt here. Two women think so. Wonder why. I really wonder why. You do hear stories about innocent men who have gone to jail, their deaths sometimes, then years later, things turn up. And then, on the other hand, there are some killers who get turned <coughs> loose and do it again. They squeeze out on some technicality. Kill again. Look, buddy, now that we've kind of cooled off. Well, uh, I was a little excited a minute ago. Well, you know how it is. I didn't mean to get nasty. Not the first one. Okay. <laughs>
we talking about elevated trains? Yes, we were. <coughs> All right. How long does it take an elevated train going at top speed to pass a given point? What has that got to do with anything? How long would it take? Yes. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. Neither would I. I don't think they mentioned it. What do you think? Maybe about ten full seconds. I'd say that was a fair guess. Anyone else? I would think about ten seconds. <laughs> Perhaps. About ten seconds, yes. All right, we're agreed. Ten seconds. What are you getting at? This. An elevated train passes a given point in ten seconds. That given point is the window of the room in which the killing took place. You can almost reach out of that room, of the window of that room, and touch the L, right? That's right. <coughs> I tried it. So? The elevated train moves past a given point in ten seconds. Now let me ask you something. Did anyone here ever live right by the L tracks? I live close to them. They make a lot of noise, don't they? I live right by the L tracks. When your window is open and the train goes by, the noise is almost unbearable. You can't hear yourself think. Okay, so you can't think. Get to the point. The old man downstairs heard the boy say- He didn't say it! He screamed it! The old man downstairs heard the boy scream, I'm going to kill you. And one second later, he heard a body fall. One second. That's the testimony, right? Right. So, so the woman across the street looked through the windows of the last two cars of the L and saw the body fall, right? Right. So? The last two cars. The last two cars. <laughs> what are you giving us here? An L train passes a given point in 10 seconds, or two seconds per car. That L had been going by the old man's window for at least six seconds, and maybe more, before the body fell, according to the woman. The old man would have had to hear the boy say, I'm going to kill you, while the front of the L was roaring past his nose. It's not possible that he could have heard it. What do you mean? Sure, he could have heard it. Is an L train going by? He said the kid yelled it out. An L train makes a lot of noise. It's enough for me. It's enough for me, too. I don't think he could have heard it. Maybe the old man didn't hear it. I mean, but the L... What are you people talking about? Are you calling the old man a liar? Something doesn't fit. Well, it stands to You're crazy! Why would he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention. Maybe. You keep coming up with these bright sayings. Why don't you send one to the TMZ? They'll pay you for that. What does that have to do with a man's life? <coughs> Why might the old man have lied? You have a right to be heard. <coughs> it's just that I looked at him for a very long time. The seam of his jacket was split under his arm. Did you notice that? He was a very old man with a torn jacket, and he carried two canes. I think I know him better than anyone here. This is a quiet, frightened, insignificant man who has been nothing all his life, who has never had recognition his name in the newspapers. Nobody knows him after 75 years. This is a very sad thing. A man like this needs to be recognized, to be questioned and listened to and quoted just once. This is very important. And you're telling us that he lied about a thing like this just so he could be important? No. He wouldn't really lie, but perhaps he'd make himself believe that he heard those words and recognized the boy's face. Well, that's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. How could you make up a thing like that? I'm not making it up. You must be making it up. People don't just lie about things like that. He made himself believe he told the truth. What do you know about it? I speak from experience. What? I am the same person. I think we all understand that. Thank you. If you want to admit you're a liar, that's all right with me. Now that is too much. She's a liar! She just told us so! She did not say that she was a liar. She was explaining. Didn't she just admit to us you were a liar? Please. 
She was explaining the circumstances so that we could understand why the old man might have lied. There is a difference. A liar is a liar. That's all there is to it. Please, have some compassion. Ladies, please. We have our job and our duty here. I think they've covered it. I hope we have. All right. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Anybody want a cough drop? Come on, let's get on with it. I'll take one. Thank you. Now, I think we've proved that the old man couldn't have heard the voice say, I'm going to kill you. Well, I disagree. Let's hear her out anyways. But supposing the old man really did hear the voice say, I'm going to kill you. This phrase, how many times has each of you used it? Probably hundreds. If you do that once more, Junior, I'm going to murder you. Come on, Rocky, kill him. We say it every day. This doesn't mean we're really going to kill someone. Don't the circumstances alter that somewhat? The old man was murdered. One thing more, the phrase was, I'm going to kill you. And the kid screamed it out at the top of his lungs. That's the way I understand it. Now don't try and tell me he didn't mean it. And how they mean it. Well, let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy would shout out a thing like that so the whole neighborhood would hear it? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Oh, bright? He's a common ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't even speak good English. <laughs> The boy is clever enough. <coughs> I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. I'm sure. The vote is nine to three, favor of guilty. I'd like to know why you changed your vote. I think there's a doubt. Where? What is the doubt? Well, there's a knife. Fine. She talked you into believing some fairy tale. Go on. Give us the reasons. The old man, too. Maybe he didn't like but Just then, maybe he did. Maybe the old man doesn't like the kid. Well, if that isn't the end. I believe there's a reasonable doubt. What are you basing it on? Stories she made up? She ought to write for the National Enquirer. She'd make a fortune. Look, the kid had a lawyer, didn't he? Why didn't the lawyer bring up any of these points? Lawyers can't think of everything. Oh, brother, you sit here and pull stories out of thin air, and now we're supposed to believe that the old man didn't get up and run to the door and hear the kid beat it downstairs 15 seconds after the killing. That's the testimony, I believe. And he swore to this, yes. He swore to this only so he could be important. Did the old man say he ran through the door? Ran, walked, what's the difference? He got there. I don't remember what he said. But I don't see how he could run. He said he went. I remember now. He said he went from the bedroom to the front door. That's enough, isn't it? Where was his bedroom again? Down the hall, somewhere. Down the hall? <coughs> Are we to send a man off to die because it's down the hall somewhere? I thought you remembered it. Don't you remember this? No, I don't. I don't remember either. Madam Foreman, I'd like to look at the diagram of the apartment. Why don't we have the why don't we have them run the whole trial over just so you can get everything straight? The bedroom is down the hall somewhere. Do you know? Do you know exactly where it is? Please. A man's life is at stake. Do you know? Well, Madam Foreman, I heard you. All right, what's this one for? How come you're the only one that wants to see exhibits all the time? Hey, I want to see this one too. So do I. And I want to stop wasting time! Are we going to start wading through all that nonsense about the <coughs> body was found? No, we're going to see how an old man who's had two strokes in the past three years and who walks with a pair of canes could get to his front door in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. How does he know how long 15 seconds is? You can't judge that kind of thing. He said 15. He was very positive about it. He's an old man! You saw that! Half of the time he was confused! How can you be positive about anything? Well, <laughs> you know. No, I don't know. 
what you wanted? That's right. Thank you. <coughs> sure. That's my job. You want this? Yes, please. Do me a favor. Wake me up when this is over. I looked at that diagram for two hours. Enough is enough. Some of us are interested. Go ahead. All right. This is the diagram of the apartment that you went to place. The old man's apartment is directly beneath it and exactly the same. Here are the L tracks. The bedroom, another bedroom, living room, bathroom, kitchen. And this is the hall. Here's the front door of the apartment and here are the steps. The old man was in bed in this room. He says he got up, went out into the hall, down the hall to the front door, and opened it and looked out just in time to see the boy racing down the stairs. Am I right? That's the story. That's what happened. 15 seconds after he heard the body fall. Correct. His bed was at the window. It's 12 feet from his bed to the bedroom door. The length of the hall is 43 feet 6 inches. He would have had to get up, get his cane, walk 12 feet, open the bedroom door, walk 43 feet, and open the front door. All in 15 seconds. Do you think this possible? You know it's possible. I don't see why not. He would have been in a hurry. He did hear the scream. He can only walk very slowly. They had to help him into the witness chair. You make it sound like it's a long walk. It's not. For an old man who uses canes, it's a long walk. What are you doing? I want to try this thing. Let's see how long it took him. I'm going to pace off 12 feet, the length of the bedroom. You're crazy. You can't recreate a thing like that! Perhaps, if you could see it, this is an important point. It's a ridiculous waste of time! Let her do it. I don't see any harm in it. Foolish, but go ahead. Hand me a chair, please. All right, this is the bedroom door. How far would you say it is from here to the door of this room? I'd say it was about <coughs> 20 feet, just about. 20 feet is close enough. All right. From here to the door and back is about 40 feet. That's shorter than the length of the hall the old man had to move through. Wouldn't you say that? A few feet, maybe. Look, this is absolutely insane. What makes you think you could do this? We can't stop her. Do you mind if I try it? According to you, it would only take 15 seconds. We can spare that. Who's got a watch with a second hand? I have. When you want me to start, stamp your foot. That will be the body falling. <laughs> we'll time you from there. Let's say he keeps his canes right at bedside. Right? Right. Okay, I'm ready. I want the hand to be at 60. <laughs> <laughs>
for you people. This kid is guilty. He's got to burn. We're letting him slip through our fingers. Our fingers? Are you his executioner? I'm one of them. Perhaps you'd like to pull the switch. For this kid, you bet I'd like to pull the switch. I'm sorry for you. Don't start. What it must feel like to want to pull the switch. Shut up. You're a saint. Shut up. You want to see this boy die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. You are a beast. You disgust me. Shut up! Ah, let me go! I'll kill her! I'll kill her! You don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? Hey, hey! Is there anything wrong, ladies and gentlemen? I heard some noise. No, there's nothing wrong. You can take that back now. We're finished with it. why we have to behave like children here. Nor do I. We have a responsibility. <coughs> this is a remarkable thing about democracy. That we are, what is the word? Ah, notified. That we are notified by mail to come down to this place and decide on the guilt or innocence of a man. Of a man we have not known before. We have nothing to gain or lose by our verdict. This is one of the reasons why we are strong. We should not make it a personal thing. Thank you. Very much. Why do you thank me? We forget. It's good to be reminded. I'm glad we're going to be civilized about this. Well, we're still nowhere. No, we're somewhere. Or getting there, maybe. Maybe. Well, who's got an idea? I think maybe we should try another vote. Madam Foreman, that's all right with me. Anybody doesn't want to vote? Let's vote. Yes, vote. All right, let's do it. I want an open ballot. Let's call our votes out. I want to know who stands where. That sounds fair. Anyone object? All right, I'll call out your jury numbers. I vote guilty. Number two, not guilty. Three, guilty. Four, guilty. Five, not guilty. Six, not guilty. Seven, guilty. Eight, not guilty. Nine, not guilty. 10, guilty. 11, not guilty. 12, guilty. That's six to six. I'll tell you something. The crime is being committed right in this room. The vote is six to six. I'm ready to walk right into court and declare a hung jury. There's no point in this going on anymore. I'd like to know why you've changed your mind. And why you changed your mind. And why you did. There are six people in this room who think we may be turning a murderer <coughs> loose into the street. Emotion won't do. Why? It would seem the old man did not see the boy run down the stairs. I do not think it likely that the old man heard the boy scream, I'm going to kill you. Old man dream. And even if the boy did scream that he was going to kill, then we have the authority of this woman to prove he might not really have met who was going to kill. Why don't we take it to the judge and let the kid take his chances with 12 other jurors? Six to six. I don't think we'll ever agree on anything. It's got to be unanimous. And we're never going to <coughs> convince her. At first, I was alone. 
Now five others agree. There is a doubt. You can't ever convince me that there's a doubt! Because I know there isn't no doubt! I tell you what, maybe we're a hung jury. It happens sometimes. We're not going to be a hung jury. But we are, right now. A perfect balance. Let's take it to the judge. There is a reasonable doubt. I don't see it. The doubt is there in my mind. Maybe we should vote. What do you mean vote? Not again! I still want to know. Vote on what? Are we or aren't we a hung jury? You mean that we vote yes, we are a hung jury, or no, we are not a hung jury? That's what I was thinking of. We can't even agree about whether or not the window should be open. <coughs> Let's make it a majority vote. The majority wins. If seven or more of us vote yes, that we are a hung jury, then we take it into the judge and tell him that we are a hung jury. Right. And if seven or more votes no, that means we aren't a hung jury, and we go on discussing it. it. Doesn't seem quite right to me. It's the only solution. I agree. It's the only way. Anything to end this. Are we agreed then? Seven or more votes yes, and we take it into the judge. Let's call our votes out. I vote yes. We're a hung jury. Two? No. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Five? No. Six? No. Seven? Yes. Eight? No. Nine? No. Ten? Yes. Eleven? No. Twelve? Yes. Ah, oh, no! It's six to six. <clears throat> we can't even get a majority to decide whether or not we're a hung jury. I went along with the majority vote on this question. And I didn't agree with voting that way. Not really. And I still don't. So I'm changing my vote. I say no, we are not a hung jury. I believe the boy is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. There are some things I'd like to find out from those who change their minds. Then we aren't a hung jury, so we go on. Good, we go on. Why did you change your mind? Well, she just seems so sure and has made a number of good points while she only gets mad and insults everybody. <laughs> Does the anger and insults change the guilt of the boy? He did do it. Are you going to turn a murderer loose when one of the jurors gets angry when she thinks a murderer is being turned loose? That's true. There is a reasonable doubt. I don't think so. The trap is straight in front of the window. Let's take that point. So the L train would have made a low rumbling noise. L trains screech when they move around curves. So the old man could have heard a scream, which is high pitched. And it is a tenement, and they have been walked. Good! Good! That's it! That's it! And what if the old man was wrong about the time it took him to get to the door, but right about whom he saw? Please remember that there were no fingerprints on the knife, and it is summer, so gloves seem unlikely. Now I want you to listen to this. She's got the goods. And it may have taken the murderer a few seconds to take a handkerchief out and wipe away the fingerprints. This is the point. Why don't we just time this one to see? Just what are we timing? Yes, let's be exact, please. I am saying that the old <coughs> man downstairs may have been wrong about the time it took him to get to the door that he was right about whom he saw running down the stairs. Now, it may have taken the murderer about 39 seconds to wipe away the fingerprints and run down, the, run down the stairs to the place where the old man saw him. The boy, that is. This is right. We reconstructed the old man getting out of bed and going to the door, and we timed that. Now, let's reconstruct the actual crime, as well as we can reconstruct it. I think a murderer could use up 30 or 40 seconds pretty easily at that point. Let's reconstruct the killing. Yes, let's. Here. You do the stabbing. No. I'll do it. <laughs> well, <coughs> why don't you be the one that gets stabbed? And remember, you take one second to fall. And he was found on his side, his right side. So fall and roll onto your right side. If someone hates another person enough to kill them, don't you think it's reasonable to assume that the murderer would look at his victim for a second or two? Divorce yourself from this particular case. Just human nature. 
Yes, it seems reasonable. Hey, now wait a minute. He falls and ends up on his right side. The father did. But stabbing someone isn't like shooting them, even when it's right in the heart. He would have worked around for a few seconds, lying there on the floor, writhing, maybe. That's quite possible. There would have been enough oxygen in the system to carry him for two or three seconds, I should think. Wouldn't the father have cried out? Maybe the kid held his mouth. That also seems <coughs> possible. There's another point we might bring out. If someone is clear enough mentally to wipe the fingerprints away after murdering someone, well, that person is also clear enough to look around the apartment, or the room in this case, to see if there are any other clues. It would be just for a second or two, I should think, but still, he would look around. This gets better and better. We're trying to make things clear. One doesn't talk about quality when murder is involved. Well, let's do it. About this on the fingerprints. We can't wipe the fingerprints off the knife. Well, what about the doorknob? <coughs> if I saw a man come into my home, a man that hated me, and if he was wiping the doorknob with a handkerchief as he came in, it'll give me an uneasy feeling. <laughs> so the doorknob must have been wiped after the killing, and this too will take some time. You timed the last one. Why don't you time this one too? All right. Stamp your foot when you want me to start. I want the head to be at 60. I'm going to kill you. Let's be honest about it. 
do you truly feel that there is no room for reasonable doubts? Yes, I do. I beg your pardon, but maybe you don't understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you mean I don't understand it? Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? How do you like this guy? He comes here running for his life, and before he can even take a big breath, he's telling us how to run the show. The arrogance of him! No one here is asking where anyone came from. I was born right here. Or where your father came from. Maybe it wouldn't hurt us to take a few tips from the people who come right here. Maybe they learned something we don't know. We're not so perfect. Please, I am used to this. It's all right. Thank you. It's not <laughs> all right. OK, OK. I apologize. Is that what you want? That's what I want. All right, let's stop the arguing. Who's got something constructive to say? Well, something's been bothering me a little the, about this whole business about the staff wound and how it was made, the downward angle. Of it. Don't tell me we're going to start that! They went over it and over it in court! I know they did, but I don't go along with it. The boy is five feet eight inches tall. The father is six feet two inches tall. That's a difference of six inches. It's a very awkward thing to stab down into someone that's a half a foot taller than you are. Look, you're not going to be satisfied until you see it again. I'm going to give a demonstration. Somebody get up! <laughs> Okay, now wash this. I don't want to have to do it again. Is this six inches? It's more than six inches. Okay, let it be more. Look <laughs> out! <laughs> That's not funny. What's the matter with you? Now calm down, nobody's hurt. Are they? No, nobody's hurt. All right, here's your angle. Take a look at it. Down and in. That's how I stab a taller man in the chest. And that's how it was done. Take a look at it and tell me I'm wrong. Down and in. I guess there's no argument. Did you ever stab a man? Of course not. <laughs> Did you? All right, let's not be silly. Did you? No, I didn't. Where do you get all your information about how it's done? What do you mean? It's just common sense. Have you ever seen a man stabbed? No. All right, I want to ask you something. The boy is an experienced knife fighter. He was even sent to the reform school for knifing someone. Isn't that so? <clears throat> That's right. Look at this. Doesn't that seem like an awkward way to handle a knife? What are you asking me for? Wait a minute. What's the matter with me? Give me that knife. Have you ever seen a knife fight? Yes. I have. In the movies. In my backyard. On my stoop. In the vacant lot. Across the street. So many of them. Switch knives came with the neighborhood where I lived. But I didn't think of it before. Just trying to get those things, huh? Anyone who's ever used a Swiss knife would never have stabbed downward. You just don't handle a Swiss knife that way. You use it underhanded. Then he couldn't have made the kind of wound that killed his father. Suppose it's conceivable that he could have made the move. But it's not likely. Not if he ever had any experience with switch knives. We know that the kid had a lot of experience with switch knives. I don't believe it! Neither do I. You're you miss a lot of mumbo jumbo. What do you think? Well, I don't know. What about you? Listen, I'll tell you all something. I'm a little sick of this whole thing already. We're getting nowhere fast. Let's pack it up and go home. Before we decide anything more, I would like to try to pull this together. This should be good. She has a right. 
Let her go ahead. Do you want me to time this too? Let's hear her. <laughs> I'm in advertising. I'm used to the big shots pulling things together. Uh, let's trip up a few shots and see if any of them land on the green. I want you all to look at this logically and consistently. We have! <coughs> Guilty! I want to know, is the kid smart or is the kid dumb? What do you mean? This is the kid who was sent to the reform school for knife fighting. The night of the murder, he bought a knife, a switch knife. It would then take a very stupid kid to go and murder a man, his father, with an instrument that everyone would associate with the kid. I quite agree. He's dumb! However, if he were dumb, then why would he make the kind of wound that an inexperienced man would make with a knife? I'm not sure I understand. To murder someone must take a great emotion, great hatred. And at that moment, he would handle the knife as best he could. And a trained knife fighter would handle it as he had been trained. Underhand. A man who had not been trained would go overhand. But the kid is being very smart. Everyone knows that he is an experienced knife fighter. So at that moment, he is smart enough to make a kind of wound an amateur would make. That man is a smart man. Smart enough to wipe fingerprints away. Perhaps even smart enough to wait until an L train is going by in order to cover the noise. Now, is the kid smart or is he dumb? Hey, now wait a minute! Well, the woman across the L track saw the murder through the window that would pass the elevator train. So someone in that train could have seen the murder too. A possibility, but no one did that we know of. It would take an awfully dumb man to take that chance, doing the murder as a train went by. Exactly. A dumb man. A very stupid man. A man swept by emotion. Probably he heard nothing. He probably didn't even hear the train coming. And whoever did kill the father did it as well as he could. The kid is dumb enough to do everything to associate himself with this a switch knife murder, and then a moment after the murder, he becomes smart. The kid is smart enough to make a kind of wound that would lead us to suspect someone else, and yet, at the same instant, he is dumb enough to do the killing as an L train is going by, and then a moment later, he is smart enough to wipe fingerprints away. To make this boy guilty, you have to say that he is dumb from 8 o'clock until about midnight, then about midnight he is smart one second, then dumb for a few seconds, and then smart again, and once again he becomes stupid. So stupid that he does not think of a good alibi. Now, is this kid smart or is he dumb? To say that he is guilty, you have to toss his intelligence like a pancake. There is doubt, <coughs> doubt, doubt. I hadn't thought of that. And the old man downstairs. On the stand, he swore it was 15 seconds. He insisted on 15 seconds. But we all agree that it must have been almost 40 seconds. Does the old man lie half of the time and then does he tell the truth the other half of the time? For this kid to be guilty, he must be stupid and then smart and then stupid and then smart and so on. And also for this kid to be guilty, the old man must be a liar half of the time and the other half of the time he must tell the truth. You can reasonably doubt. I'm sold on reasonable doubt. I am too. I've wanted more talk, and now I've had it. I want another vote. All right, there's another vote called for. I guess the quickest way is to show of hands. Anyone object? All right, all those voting not guilty, raise your hand. Nine. All those voting guilty? <coughs> three. The vote is nine to three in favor of acquittal. I don't understand. How could you believe this kid is innocent? You know how the rules I don't have to tell you! They don't know what the truth is. And let me tell you, they don't need any big reason to kill anyone either! You know? They're drunk and bad! Somebody's lying. Nobody's blaming them. That's how they are. You know what I mean? Violent! Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us! Hey, where are you people going? These people are drinking and fighting all the time! And if somebody gets killed, so somebody gets killed. They don't care! Oh, sure, there are some good things about them, too. Look, I'm the first to say that here. 
I've met a few of them who are pretty decent, but but that's the exception. Most of them, it's like they have no feelings. They can't do anything. What's going on here? Speaking my peace, and you, you miss enemy. They're no good. There's not a one of them who's any good. You better watch out, take it from me. This kid. Well, don't you know anything about them? Listen to me! I'm trying to tell you something here! I've had enough. If you open your mouth again. I'm only trying to tell you. There is a reasonable doubt. 
You're alone. Eleven votes, not guilty. One, guilty. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. I have a right yes, to- you have a right. Well, I told you. I think the kid's guilty. What else do you want? Your arguments. I gave you my arguments. We're not convinced. We're waiting to hear them again. We have time. <coughs> Listen, what's the matter with you? You're the one. You made all the arguments. You can't turn now. A guilty man is going to be walking the streets. A murderer. He's got to die. Stay with me. I'm sorry. I'm convinced now. I don't think I'm wrong often, but I guess I was this once. There is a reasonable doubt in my mind. We're waiting. You're not going to intimidate me! I'm entitled to my opinion! It's gonna be a hung jury! That's it! There's nothing we can do about that except hope that some night, why, maybe in a few months, you might get some sleep. You're all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. If it is a hung jury, there will be another trial, and some of us will point these things out to the various <coughs> Not guilty. 